G'day there guys, Marky here, and welcome back to another episode of r slash relationship advice. If you guys do love this kind of content, don't forget to smack that subscribe button, like, and even hit that notification bell if you really want to keep up to date with every single episode that I release. With that said, I want you to sit back, relax, chuck a prawn on the barbie, and let's get right into it. Posted by user RoseshipT, titled, My husband texted me that he left for two days with no warning. Life has been stressful, and like a lot of people, we've been under a lot of stress individually and relationally. I am sympathetic to needing a break for sure. He had recently gotten a concussion as well, which is miserable, and had mentioned planning a solo trip somewhere a couple of times, and he's done them in the past. We had talked about our day, I felt like we had a nice morning, and I left to go run errands and was going to pick him up after work. While I was out, I called him to ask a question and he didn't answer. I was concerned that he left his phone at home when he supposedly left for work, but a few minutes later I got a text saying that he was feeling stressed and overwhelmed and that he's sorry it's short notice, but he's leaving for two days to stay with a relative and is disconnecting from his phone and will text me tomorrow to check in and that hopefully we can use this time to refocus. Like I said, I am so understanding of needing a break from life and it seems like it was needed for him. However, I have conflicting feelings over this. I was beside myself worried. He's never just up and left and I was freaking out until I could get a hold of his relative and make sure he was there and was relieved to know that he was safe. In moments of feeling so much that a person can't think is one thing, I've been there before too, but sending a text and immediately going no contact for two days is something that as a spouse doesn't sit well with me. If he had called instead of texted, or even called later in the day, maybe when he wasn't so overwhelmed, just to let me know that he was alright, it would have been a different story. So the next day when he checked in, he sent me a text saying he was sorry I was blindsided by the sudden decision and knows this is uncomfortable for me, and thanked me for giving him time to process. When I asked if he could call just to hear his voice, he said he couldn't do that and he hasn't contacted me yet. I know that when discussing mental health it's important to prioritize the person struggling and to say I'm upset he won't call me might seem kinda shallow, but truthfully, if I'm trying to be in a partnership with someone who just walked out the door, this is concerning to me in regards to maintaining trust, which we have been working on in counseling. I want to be supportive and understanding, but this hurt like hell. He is in therapy, I am in therapy, and we were supposed to have couples counseling today, ironically, but that's not happening now. I just don't know what to do. I don't know how to go forward. I'm not okay with how the situation happened. I feel so hurt. Am I being inconsiderate? I need help. Please throw me any advice. I feel like I'm drowning. In the comments, check the bank records. Concussions and subsequent brain injuries are absolutely known to result in severe, if not debilitating, personality changes. I would consider this a strong possibility if nothing else explains it. I agree with this. Opie, has he seen a doctor? I've had a severe concussion and it wreaked havoc on my emotions and changed my personality. I was anxious all the time. I couldn't focus. It was impossible to think rationally. I couldn't control my emotions at all and this was while under the care of a doctor. I did seek out therapy because I was having so much trouble regulating my emotions and mood. As much of a red flag as this seems to normal people without a head injury, please cut him some slack. Head injuries are confusing, scary, and everything is overwhelming. I know it's hard, but try to be supportive. He's literally not in his right mind. OP replies, When asked today, he swore he's been feeling the exact same overwhelm before his injury, and it isn't that. I am inclined to agree with you, as there has been a subtle shift from my perspective. Regardless, if he doesn't feel like that's the issue, then all that is in store for me is to hope that he would have realized soon and make adjustments, in the best case, for the sake of the relationship, realize later after he's better, and then I guess I get the satisfaction of being validated, or else I'm stuck with someone whose brain is too broken to act in a way that is tolerable, so I feel like the ball's in his court on that one. This sounds like it is unacceptable. I would expect this from a high school relationship, not a marriage. I don't know why you're being downvoted. You're absolutely right. In a marriage, you communicate. 
You don't just disappear and then get to play the depression and mental issues card. The husband is being an immature man-child with his behavior and she needs to say, hey, I'm not effing okay with how you're acting and treating me. Edit for an update. Thank you for the support. It was really helpful. The only person I could talk to about this has been out of cell coverage and your comments helped me put my words into feelings. I was able to speak to him on the phone, finally. After expressing my worries and frustrations, he told me he admitted leaving me like he did was a bad decision, but he needed to take care of himself first and figure out what he wants before saying, I'm sorry I caused you to worry, but I hope you can take some time and understand why I did that. I asked him to come up with a better apology that takes my feelings into consideration if he wants this relationship to continue. I point blank asked, do you want me? and the silence after that spoke louder than anything. Wow. He informed me that he is currently trying to decide what he wants from life, including our relationship. I told him that he'd need to make a decision pretty soon if he wants me to be an option, and when asked when he'd be returning, he said he doesn't know how many more days he'll be gone, but he would let me know soon. As many pointed out, the concussion puts a variable in here. It is the only reason that I can think that would make him act like he never has in the past. And though devastated and in total shock, I'm going to hear whatever he has to say when he decides to come home. I have put off making my decision for the moment. My whole world feels too askew to make one. I just can't believe this. We had a wedding and consider ourselves married, but are not legally married, so it makes things a lot simpler. Also, his relatives live out in the sticks and have been keeping an eye out because of the head injury. He might be acting like a dick, but he isn't a cheater. That is so interesting to me. You had a wedding and consider yourselves married but are not legally married. I've never heard of a weird arrangement like that before, but hey, if you guys know of one like that, let me know in the comments because <laughs> this is the first I've ever heard. I'm going to side with everyone in the comments here and say I believe this is the concussion. Concussions are no joke. I have had many concussions in the past myself, and I know what it feels like to go through that, so personally, that makes a lot of sense to me as to the, you know, random change of pace that this guy has just decided to be on. I don't agree with his actions, but I can see how the concussion would influence them. But what about you guys? I want to know what you guys think before we get to the update. And now for the update to a post I made over a year ago when my husband left me. It feels like years since this happened, but I wanted to follow up on it. This community was incredibly helpful when I didn't have anyone to turn to, and I am really grateful for the people who were able to help. I had been so entrenched in fixing things that I couldn't even see how toxic this relationship had become and was taking on blame for things out of my control. My now ex had ended up calling me after a few days in hiatus and broke up with me over the phone. He requested that I just sell all of his stuff, but I told him that he needed to come back and get it himself, which he did with the condition that I promised I wouldn't be there. Unfortunately, I had to clean out the rest of our apartment and deal with all of the logistics of bills and felt like I had to harass him for the half of them when he wouldn't send it when I asked. He stopped talking to me and it became known to me that he was telling his family that I was a narcissist and manipulative. The reasoning given of why he left so suddenly and they completely cut contact as well. Many pointed to the head injury he had sustained as the reason this went down the way it did, and I definitely agreed that that was the catalyst, so I made sure his relatives knew about it in case he needed help. However, I couldn't do anything beyond accept that he was actively rejecting me, and I haven't seen him since the day that he left. I had a soft place to land at my parents' house and started healing from there. I had already been seeing a therapist, and she was my godsend, and I was able to open up about some of the issues that I acquired during this relationship and really see it for what it had been, which was a clash of immaturity and mental health struggles that caused us both to inadvertently hurt each other all the time. I worked from the beginning, and still work some days, to not settle into resentment from the whole situation, knowing how heavy the weight of my own anger would weigh me down, and at this point, I can say that I can look at our relationship through the lens of, we loved each other, but we outgrew each other, and the way he left was not okay, and I fully hold him accountable to that. I was hurting really intensely, but I started exercising and worked to be physically healthy and emotionally healthy at the same time. 
I had just found a treatment for chronic health issues that I had been dealing with, so I felt like my life shifted into a new era. As the dust settled, I have been able to start going to college and found purpose again. I was ready to date again sooner than I initially thought I would have. I was still in the healing process, but I felt like that didn't limit me from having fun hanging out with new people and seeing what was out there. I ended up meeting someone really great pretty fast, which was a surprise to me, but a really good surprise. So far, things have been going really well and completely different than even the good portion of my past relationship experience. I think my past self would have really cared a lot about what people think or would have been unsure about a new relationship so soon, but I also know myself and what I want from life so much better than when I started dating the first time and proved to myself that I have the strength to not only survive hurt, but to rebuild my life into something better than it was. Anyways, all this to say that if you're going through an ugly marriage and people are telling you to get out and the thing that's stopping you from doing that is feeling like you'll never get back on your feet, it may take some time, but you will, and it is 100% worth it. TLDR, my husband left me out of the blue one day in the shittiest way. I posted about it here, I got some good advice, and over a year later I am doing great without him. Don't let the fear of starting over dictate your life. We love those healthy marriages. Honestly, not how I expected this story to go, but it does make sense. People do change over these long periods of time, and obviously this is one of those ones where either OP didn't realize how toxic it was, or was leaving those parts out of the story. If you were to ask me, I think the concussion knocked some nonsense into his head, and he left this relationship in the most toxic way possible. Anyway, I'd love to know what you guys think of this one down in the comments. Oh my god. Our next post comes from user Upper Mountain Upper Rope, titled, Am I the a-hole for not bringing supplies to my friend anymore? I, 19 male, have known my best buddy, 19 male, since we were babies. We grew up next door, went to the same school together in our tiny town, went into the same sport, and became rivals. I'm not proud to admit, but once we were in high school, I became a real jerk to him and said some awful things mostly because he was better at the sport than me, and I was insecure. He ended up leaving town after graduation, and no one knew where he was. I don't think it's all because of me, but yeah, I might have been part of the reason. He cut contact with everyone, including his mom. He was missing for months, and everyone was worried. I really wanted to apologize to him, but no one could reach him. Then some kid from town was out exploring, and spotted him living in a rundown house on a mountainside about two hours from town. I was super happy to hear he was okay. Maybe I shouldn't have, but I went up the mountain to visit him. He was surprised to see me, but he was also very happy. We caught up, and I finally got a chance to apologize to him. It was like old times, and we rekindled our relationship even better than before. When I first visited, I saw he didn't really have much to eat or drink up there, so I started making a trip to bring him supplies every other month. It's close by, but it's hard to get up there. There's no road to drive up there, so I have to walk for a few hours. But it's been a year now, and I'm getting kind of tired of it. His mum cries about missing him all the time. She can't make the trip up. I missed a month because I got sick, and then had to make up work days. He was kind of annoyed about it, and snapped at me because he was running low on supplies, but I'm getting annoyed that he insists on living up there. I told him he's hurting his other friends and family by keeping his reclusive life and he needs to stop being so selfish and come back to society. It was hurting me that he wasn't taking care of himself. He looks like crap and I always worry about what shape he will be in when I arrive next. I also told him I was getting sick of going up a mountain every two months. He told me he didn't ask me to and I was the one who volunteered to do it. I told him fine, I would stop because I didn't want to enable him to keep living away from everyone else, and I haven't been back up the mountain since. I feel really bad. Everybody in town is telling me I should resume bringing him supplies and the gifts they make for him, because everyone knows when my trip is coming up. He's kind of a local hero from our sports days. They're saying I'm being a jerk, but I just want him to come back, or at least move to somewhere more hospitable, and I feel like if I continue bringing him stuff, he won't. Small update. I went to celebrate New Year's with some of my friends. I'm trying to convince them to do a group visit with me in a few weeks. I told them the only way I'd go back up again is if some of them came with me. 
I didn't really want to do it again, but I will if other people are with me. I'm hoping that if they go once, they'll take the initiative and start visiting by themselves too. Or better yet, we can all convince him to come down. They seemed vaguely open to it, but I'm not sure if it's, we want to do this, or just humouring me to shut me up. Honestly, I'm going to go with not the a-hole for this one. If he wants to roleplay as the Unabomber or John McCandles, he can do that all he likes, but not on your dime. This guy's a grown-ass man. If he can't learn to live off the land hours out in whoop whoop, then what are you doing enabling him? Especially if you don't want to anymore. I understand why you're doing what you're doing. I understand why you want to bring other friends out there. I just don't see any particular reason for you to be doing this. I don't think that you're a bad person if you stop doing it, so I'm going with not the a-hole for this one. In the comments, not the a-hole. You do not have to bring your friend anything, and you are not responsible for his lifestyle and behaviour. Also, if he cut off contact with all, including his mother, you are not the sole reason. No one ignores their parents because a friend left them in high school. I'm not sure that you're helping by not bringing him stuff, but I'm not sure you are hurting the situation either. Food for thought. Do you want to be his friend as he is now? Are you his friend out of obligation or because he has something to offer you back? Are there any social services in your community or volunteer agencies that you feel might be helpful for him? OP replies, Yeah, I want to be his friend. I feel bad for how things went in high school. Growing up, he was always at my house and I was always at his. We hung out after school every day. Then all the BS happened, which was mostly me, and we stopped talking for the rest of school. But when I talked to him again after I apologized, it was like high school didn't happen. It was great, and I missed that. I don't know who to ask about that. I told the police and they said that it was just his choice, and he could come down if he felt like it. Why isn't anyone else bringing him supplies if they are so worried? You proved how sorry you were for checking in on him and bringing him supplies for a year. Sounds like he needs some mental help and maybe some friends or family intervention. OP responds, I think it was just convenient. I went up to visit him the first two times and people saw that I was bringing him food. So then they started tacking on stuff for me to bring up when I went. Also, because I took the brunt of the blame for the bullying, so I guess they felt that it was my problem to deal with and not theirs. I know his mum definitely blames me, even though she's never said anything directly to me. When I told people I wasn't going up anymore, she started casually bringing up how miserable my friend was in high school to my family, and they agreed with her. When I told one of my friends I wasn't doing it anymore, he said that I was messed up to not bringing him stuff after I treated him so badly, and that I should be groveling to him and do whatever he needed. Everyone sucks here. You should provide more info on how you were a real jerk to him, because this sounds like serious bullying if it's potentially the reason for going that reclusive. His mum definitely sucks. She's certainly manipulative and potentially abusive. If he's snapping at you for running late, he doesn't then get to say that he never asked at the start. Everyone who is asking you to do it could try to do it themselves. If he wants to live a reclusive life, that's his choice, but he needs to deal with the consequences. OP replies, I told him I didn't want to be friends with him anymore, and I started calling him a loser. Our friends also started excluding him because I made up some crap about him. Yeah, it was stupid, and I sucked. I feel horrible. I was going through some crap at the time. Not that it excuses anything, and yeah, he didn't deserve it. Edit, his mum's actually pretty nice though. She bakes his favourite treats to send up with me, and he writes her letters to send down with me. I tried to give him a phone but the reception wasn't good. He doesn't want to talk to her because he thinks he disappointed her from what she's told me was written in the letters. So after hearing this extra information, do you guys still stick with your original decision on this story? And now for the update. I did end up going back to the mountain with my friends, but like I said, I didn't bring supplies. We all tried to talk to him to come down, but he refused. I was pretty disheartened, but he made his choice and so had I. I told him I wouldn't be back, but if he ever wanted to come down, my door was always open to him. About a month later, I was surprised when there was a knock on my door, and I opened it, and it was him. He was so thin and dirty, but seeing him off the mountain made me happy. I got him cleaned up, and now he's staying with me. 
I was a bit surprised that he didn't want to go home to his mom, but he told me that I was the only one who made an effort to be there for him when he was acting unreasonable, and that he wanted to stay with me, if that was okay. So yeah, living with me now and who knows what the future holds. Edit, thanks for all the comments. I see a lot of you are concerned that I'm not going to be able to set boundaries with him, or that he's going to mooch off of me. You don't have to worry. My grandpa set me up with a really good job at the local gym in our town, and I'm making good money and living by myself. I have enough to support the both of us for now, and really, I don't mind him staying indefinitely. Giving him a safe space to recover is all I want for him right now, and we can worry about the rest later. We got him set up with a therapist online that will be seeing him twice a week, and I'm hoping it will help him. I may be a little over my head when it comes to my mental health issues, I don't know how to help him myself, and I don't know when to ask him questions or when to back off. I don't want to make things worse, and I'm a bit scared to talk to him about the past, but hopefully the therapist can help him. I also urged him to call his mom. He claimed he will sometime this week. And OP mentions in the comments what possibly could have caused his friend to seclude himself from everyone else in the first place. I've tried to gently ask about why he did it. The most I've gotten from him is that the attention got to be too much for him, and he didn't like it. He was pretty popular around our small town, but I wouldn't say he was famous or anything. Like, the local news interviewed him and the whole team a couple of times, and he'd be recognized by people. I don't know why he couldn't have just moved out of town, or if I'm getting the whole truth from him, but I don't want to drive him away by asking too much. Yeah, very interesting situation that one. I don't know all the answers either, just like that first story, it seems as though there's a lot of context that's being left out. But yeah, much like over a quote-unquote relationship, people change, uh, fame can get to people, even if it's only very you know, localized fame. Perhaps something snapped inside and he just felt like he needed time to himself, uh, especially given the situation with OP and all the bullying. That, that does a damage on a person's psyche. What do you guys think of this one? I'm still sticking with OP's not the a-hole for this one, and I'm glad that they did go out despite my advice to not go and help the friend in the woods. Alright, and that's where I'm going to leave the episode for today, guys. I do hope you enjoyed it. If you did, obviously let me know what your thoughts on the video are down below. With that said, I hope you guys have a lovely day, night, sleep, whatever you're up to, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.